going on guys welcome back to this video today we'll be covering wireshark we'll be covering wireshark from a to z so if you want to learn how to use wireshark this video is gonna be for you so what we will be covering in this video first thing we're going to cover the gui navigation items then we will be covering the packet dissection plus we will be covering again the navigation of packets how to navigate through different sorts of packets also we will be talking about the uh, data extraction data extraction and export plus export they're technically the same thing and then we will be covering the most important aspect of Wireshark, which is the packet filtering. Okay, so first let's go over the GUI interface and talk about the various sections of Wireshark. So as a reminder guard, this video is part of two rooms. The first one is Wireshark, the basics, and the other one is packet operations. Okay, so once we open Wireshark, we see this landing page or we see this uh, interface so as you can see guys here we have the menu and then we have what is called the toolbar so the menu plus this bar both are called the toolbar and the toolbar contains multiple as you can see multiple menus shortcuts for packet sniffing and processing including this button so you can start live packet capture and then we have the display filter. This filter is called a display filter. Here we where we apply the queries and the filtering. We'll be covering this later on. And then, as you can see, guys, here we have the recent files that have been opened by Wireshark. These represent the packet capture files. And then we have the capture filter and interfaces. This represents the available interfaces and capture points. And lastly, at the very bottom, we have the, the status bar. The status bar contains the number of packets, the profile, and the tool status. Okay, now let's first start and load a sample packet capture. We can do so by using the file menu, using the open, and then we can navigate to the file. We're going to choose the exercise, the first one, and here we can see the packets are loaded. All right, so as you can see, we have the file name called exercise.pcap. And this represents the packet list. These are the packets that we have here. This pane is called the packet list. Down here on the left, we have the packet details. And on the right, we have the packet bytes. Okay, so the packet list here contains a summary of the packets. As you can see, we can see the source, the submission IP addresses, the protocol, the length. We can, of course, add columns. We're going to see how we add columns to this list later on. Okay, now the packet details on the left pane. Here we can see detailed protocol breakdown of every single packet. Whenever we highlight a packet from the packet list, we can see the information changes in the packet details. We can see that the information uh, broken down based on the protocol. Now, on the right, we have the packet bytes pane. We can see the hex and ASCII representation of the selected packet. When we change the packet, the representation here changes. It contains the details in both hex and ASCII format. Now, one more thing about Wireshark is the colors so we can control the coloring of packets from the view menu clicking on view and then we can go to coloring rules here we can see the current rules followed by default to color the packets for example uh, we have the R packets with this color and we have the TCP reset packets in a red color we can change these colors from here okay now these buttons here represent the uh, packet capturing. If we click on this shark button, the blue button, we will start 
packet capture meaning we will start to sniff the packets on the configured interface now at default we will see the interface in here so if you click on that as you can see could it run is it, uh, yeah we need permissions but when this starts we will start capturing the packets let's go back to the exercise and once this starts as you can see we have this red button here when we click on this button we will stop the capture okay let's go back to exercise and then we will go to statistics and we click on capture file properties here we can see all the details about the current capture file we have for example we can extract the number of bytes if you go to statistics section we can see the number of bytes captured and the percentage the time span everything there is to see about the current capture file in a brief fashion we can see all of them here from the stats captured file properties now let's take a sample packet and go over the various sections on the left pane as an analyst or even as a network administrator you need to understand the meaning of every single section from the packet details list for example let's take a look at this one we have the protocol breakdown first thing we have the frame if we click on a frame and collapse we can see the details on here now the frame here will show us the frame or the packet we are looking at and details specific or pertinent to the physical layer of the OZ model all this information are pertinent to the physical layer of the OZ model the physical layer not the data link layer here we can see information about the frame and then we have the ethernet we click on this and here we can see information pertinent to the data link layer meaning we can see the source and destination mac addresses of the packets and third one we have the internet protocol version 4 here we can see breakdown based on the network layer we can see information about the ip v4 addresses meaning the source and destination ipv ip addresses we can see them from here as you can see this is the source address and this is the destination ip address okay and lastly we have information about the transmission control layer we can see information about the TCP layer, such as the port number, source and destination port numbers. Now, sometimes if you are examining a packet uh, that has, uh, you know, application layer details such as HTTP, you will see additional section in here. As you can see, this is section is pertinent to the application layer of the OZ model. Here you can see information about the protocol belonging to this layer in the OZ uh, model as you can see guys the packet list here details information about every single packet based on the OZ model so if you don't know the OZ model it's very recommended guys to go back and review it because everything mentioned here the protocol breakdown is heavily reliant on the OZ model let's go back to the HTTP layer packet here we can see additional entry detailing the protocol in the application layer if we collapse this we can see information such as the type of the request the host the user agent meaning we can see details about the uh, as you can see again the get request whether the whether it is get or post or put or delete we can see information about or details about the uh, application layer protocol from here now i understand the details or the protocol breakdown let's now learn how to navigate through these packets so as you can see guys these are the packets and there is no here meaning these packets are numbered so as you can see it starts with one two three four five this makes it easy for us as analysts and network administrators to navigate through packets but how so how to navigate through these packets we go to the go menu and select go to packets and as you can see new bar has popped up where we can enter the packet number say i want to navigate to the packet number 50. i enter 50 here and i go to the packet it was 50 so we're gonna the zero wasn't typed 
5.0 and directly it takes me to packet 50 as you can see here and for me I can again examine the protocol breakdown of this packet Alternatively, guys, if you want to find the packets in another way, in a more detailed fashion, you can select the edit menu and then go to find packets. So we have now a new bar popped up. We have packet details and packet bytes and packet list. We explained these earlier. So as a reminder, the packet list is here. The packet details is this one on the left pane and packet bytes it on the right pane. So here we select or we choose where to look. What is the uh, the view that we want to look in? So if you select packet details, it's going to look for the packets from here on the left pane. All right, so here we choose the type of search. It's going to be, are we going to be searching for string? Are we going to be searching for hex value, display filter, or regular expression? Most of the time, the searches are conducted using either string or regular expression. For example, let's select search using a string and type here download and click on fight. So what does that mean? It means Wireshark now will look for the string packet okay, across all packets using the packet details. So if there is a match, it will show me the batch, the match here in the packet details. As you can see, we have one hit on packet number 31,192, and we found the word download in here. So it was found under the uh, line-based text data in this packet. If you look closely at this packet, we can see it is a response to a request. You can click find one more time and you can see more occurrences of the same word. Currently we have only one. So when we have more than one occurrence, as you can see the packet number changes, meaning now we are examining a different packet that contains the word download. Okay, now let's say you are examining a, pack, a capture such as this one and you found a packet of interest. Say you want to analyze this packet, but currently you have other things in hand that you are analyzing. So if you want to get back to this later, what you want to do, you want to highlight the packet. So you highlight this and click on mark or unmark. This will highlight the packets as you can see with black color. Again, guys, you can change the coloring rules by going back to file uh, to was edit, no, view, in view, and change the coloring rules. If you want this to be, if you want the marked packets to be highlighted using a different color, so you're going to change the coloring rules. So for now, you can highlight the packets. As you can see, we highlighted them. Then we can get back to them later for. Uh, future analysis. If you want to remove the mark, you can simply right click and select unmark. You can unmark all the packets. Another useful feature in Wireshark is suppose that more than one analyst or more than one network administrator working on the packet capture. So you want to see other analyst perspective on a certain packet, you can right click here and select the packet comments. It's going to show you all the comments, if any, that have been written by the other analysts. Other analysts. If you want to write a, a comment for other analysts to examine, you can write your own here, demo. And if you want, you can write the date. And click on OK. Now, if we examine the packet one, one more time, you can see we have packet comment new section opened up on the in the details or in the packet details where it shows me the um, comments written 
So I wrote the date here so that analysts know when I typed the comment. Okay, so now we know the basic features here. Let's say we want to extract a specified packet for further analysis. Remember that Wireshark is not the only tool in the market for packet analysis. We have T-Shark, we have TCP dump, we have Zeek, we have Brim. We talked about all of these in the previous videos. Now let's say we want to export specific packets for further analysis using different tools. What we can do here, we can select a packet, such as this one. We can select it with the control, and then we go to file and say we want to export specified packets. Click on that, and here we can select to export all packets or selected packets only. Or we can choose by range using the numbers. Once we do that, we give it a name and we click on save. It will export the selected packets in a PCAP file where you can analyze them later or export them into a different tool. Alternatively, you can export all packets, but since you have the packet capture, you don't need to go on this option. All right, let's go click on cancel. Now let's learn how we can extract artifacts from the packets, such as images, executable files, HTML files, so on and so forth. We can do that using, using the export objects feature from here. So export objects, we click on this, we can see we have HTTP, exporting artifacts from the HTTP protocol, SMB, TFTP, and other protocols. If you click on HTTP, it will show you all the artifacts that can be extracted from HTTP packets in the current capture file. We can see we have one HTML file, another one here, and we have what looks like a text file. It's a note file. And we have also, looks like we have images as well. We can save all or we can save a selected one by clicking on save. So we're going to need to save one of these, which is the text file. You're going to find the reason later on. So this is the note. We're going to select this one and save it. Select desktop. Let's take a look at the file. So this is a note file. Okay. Back to Wireshark. One more thing which is useful for network administrators who troubleshoot network problems is the expert information. Now, expert information can be found by clicking on, as you can see, the lower left bottom section. We click on this and we bring up this menu here. Now, what all of this means? So, as you can see, we have colored, uh, different colors. So, every color has different meaning. For example, packets with red color means we have problems with these packets, meaning they are malformed packets. We can see the explanation using the group here. So for every uh, color, we have the number of packets. So for red colors, we have two, as you can see, 15, uh, 14, uh, sorry, 15 packets with red color, meaning we have 15 packets or considered as malformed packets. We have, as you can see, 1,636 packets highlighted with the yellow color, meaning we have warnings like error codes or problem statements. And here, this color it means that we have events such as application error codes, and the blue color is for informational, meaning nothing prob nothing uh, wrong with the packets. It's just information on usual workflow. So we can use these expert information to analyze the packets and see if we have network problems, error codes, or problem statements. Now let's talk about filtering packets, which is the most important feature in Wireshark. Okay, when we talk about packet filtering, we are talking about narrowing down the search to a different aspect of a single packet or multiple aspects. So as you can see, every packet has, we have source IP, destination IP, and we saw the protocol breakdown in the packet details list. 
or the packet details pane. Now, there are different types of filtering. There is the first one, it is called apply as filter. Apply as filter is a way of filtering only a specific entity from a packet. All right, let's say we have this packet with a source IP address that starts with 145, 254, 160, 237. Say I want to search with this IP address. I want to extract all packets or filter all packets with this IP address. I can right click and go to apply as filter. Select it. As you can see now, everything changed. To the number of packets changed, the view has changed. And we can see in the display filter here bar that Wireshark has automatically typed the filter for us. There is no need for us to know the syntax for this kind of filter. But on the other hand, we can see we are searching with only a specific IP address. So here we are looking to extract all the packets that has this IP address as a source or destination IP address. Again, if you want to cancel the filter, we can click on the X button. And this will bring back the original view. Now there is another sort of filtering called the conversation filter. So previously we have we had only one single entity by which we search the packets. Now, if you want to, for example, use the conversation filter, we can go ahead and click on conversation filter. And we can choose to look for packets that are similar to this packet or related to this this packet in terms of the IP addresses and port numbers. You can right click here and select um, conversation filter and select IPv4 for example. So look at the filter now. IP address equal to 145 and IP address equal to 65. So why Wireshark brought up this filter? Because when we use conversation filter, we use more than one entity to look through the packets. That's the main difference between conversation filter and apply as a filter. In apply as a filter, we use a single entity from here. But with conversation filter, we use both entities, IP addresses, to look for packets uh, similar to this one. We can also cancel this one and change the way we apply the conversation filter. You can right click here and choose back the conversation filter and we search with TCP. So what happened here? Right now we are using the IP addresses and port numbers to find relevant packets or similar packets to this one. So here we're looking for relevancy. We want to find relevant packets to the selected one. Um, one more thing about the conversation filter is the ability to colorize the uh, packets. For example, I can right click here and colorize the conversation. Select TCP and I can choose a color for this. So now the colors have changed accordingly. I can right click back and select colorize conversation and choose a different color. That will, this will change the colors. Okay, let's now click on X and choose a different filter. Now there is the filter that's named color, uh, prepared as filter. So prepared as filter, it is similar to apply as filter we saw previously. However, the model doesn't apply the filters after the choice. Meaning, let's take an example. So we go here and prepare as filter. Look at this. So Wireshark has, as you can see, typed, automatically typed the filter, but didn't apply the filter yet. So when we enter, we are applying the filter now. It is the same as apply as filter. That's the difference here. The difference is in prepare as filter, we don't apply the filter. I mean, Wireshark doesn't automatically apply the filter. It just types the filter in the display filter bar. Now, another one is apply as column. Apply as column is kind of different than the previous filters. It's that, it's that it, it adds the relevant uh, selected filter as a column. For example, we can go here to a sample packet, DNS1, 
select um, the user datagram protocol for example and add the source port here right click and we can select apply as column so now the source port has been added as a column back here we can add it destination column as well and we have the destination column added here the cool thing is it applies to all the packets so we can see here the source and destination port for all the other packets and we can use them as a search criteria as well additional feature in Wireshark is viewing the raw data of every single packet this feature is tremendously used by security analysts and network administrators while analyzing packet captures for example we can right click a package here and select follow tcp stream or follow the stream it may differ from tcp to udp depending on the type of packet here it is offering only follow tcp stream so we're going to go to follow tcp stream we can see the raw details of the packets so the get request Everything in red is the request sent by the client and in blue, the response sent by the server. All right, so up until now, we have discussed the basic features of Wireshark, packet navigation, the filtering. Now let's go ahead and answer a couple questions in the Wireshark room here. So tool overview, scrolling down, read the packet read the capture file comments what is the flag and uh, select stats capture file properties scroll down to the comments and we can see the flag what is the total number of packets we can see the total number of packets from here 58,628 using the capture file properties what is the the SHA 256 hash value of the capture file Again, we can see the hash of the file in the same pane. This is the SHA-256 hash. Okay, next, packet dissection. View packet number 38. Let's go to packet number 38. Using the go to packet. So this is the packet number 38. Let's mark the packet. So it's here, fine. Which markup language is used under the HTTP protocol? So let's go back to the packet. We want to see protocol breakdown information. We can see it is extensible markup language. That's the markup language listed here. What is the arrival date of the packet? Okay. So these are, these are information that can be found or details that can be found in the packet details section the arrival date we can scroll down here collapse this and we can highlight the this is the date which is 13 13 may thursday 2004 what is the ttl value the ttl value is the time to live value and it's a value specific to the internet protocol. So we're gonna select internet version four. And from here we can see the TTL value scrolling down. It is 47. What is the TCP payload size? So we're gonna look at the payload size in the transmission control protocol section. TCP payload size can be found Let's see where it is. Yeah, so it is 424. And lastly, what is the e tag value? The e tag value can be found in the HTTP details. So it is here, should be here. E tag is here. Okay, packet navigation now. Search the R for W string in packet details. What's the name of artist one? So now we are searching for strings in the packets. We're gonna uh, need to use the analyze.
the edit and find packet we select packet details as the place where we want to search for the string and here we type the string making sure that string is selected and we click on find okay let's see here so we found one hit here in packet number 33790 and we have one string r4w the question is what is the name of artist one so as you can see we have a value here artists to php question mark artist equal one and that's the complete name of the artist go to packet 12 okay Now this is packet 12 let's mark the packets and we want to read the comments so packet number 12 as highlighted here indeed has comments section in the packet details pane so we collapse this and we can see that what is the answer okay so we have kind of nonsense comments this is not flag but we have instructions here on how to find the answer so the answer is saying go back to the number 39765 look at the packet details pane right click on the jpg section and export okay so 39765 So going to this packet, indeed we have a JPG section, meaning there is an image transferred in this packet. I'm gonna right click here, and we want to export the packet bytes, meaning we want to export the artifacts or whatever there is in this packet. So we're gonna select desktop, and we're gonna need to give this a name. Let's say test. And here we have to select raw data all files say raw data and here we have an image here and now we're gonna open up the command line cd2 desktop md5 sum test and this will give us the answer Okay, there is a text file inside the packet capture. Find the file and read it. What is the alien's name? There is only one text file inside the capture. Find the file and read it. What is the alien name? Remember guys, we did this earlier and I told you there is a reason why I exported this file. So we open this and we can see indeed there is an alien and that's the alien name. Packet master. Look at the expert info section. What is the number of warnings? So again, the export section is used to troubleshoot network problems. I'm going to go back to Wireshark and go to stats and open, oh, not stats. It is in the analyze section. The number of warnings, remember that the warnings are highlighted with the color yellow. And we can see the number of bytes, uh, sorry, the number of packets with warnings, they are 1,600. 36 lastly we have the packet filtering so we are required to go to packet number four okay go to packet number four so we have the packet here the question is right click on the hypertext transfer protocol and apply it as a filter Look at the filter pane. What is the filter query? So we highlight here the HTTP in packet number four. So if we select here, it's going to apply the destination address. Okay, if we select here, it's going to apply the source. Select here, it's going to apply the length of the frame. Now select the HTTP, but it is not popping up. It's not allowing me to select it. Anyway, I'm going to write here HTTP. 
Okay. Look at the filter pane. What is the filter query? It's HTTP. What is the number of displayed packets? We can see the number of displayed packets. I remind you guys, it can be found at the lower pane from here. We have 58,620. Oh, no. If we apply the filter, so the display, that's the total number of packets, but the display is 1,089. Go to pack number 33,790. Okay, let's do that, sir. And this is the packet. We're gonna highlight this so we don't we don't get lost. And follow the stream. What is the total number of artists? So this is the packet. Follow the stream, meaning we want to see the raw data. So I have two streams: the TCP and the HTTP. Which one to follow? Let's go back to the question. There's no specification. I'm gonna choose HTTP. Okay. What is the total number of artists? Okay, scrolling down to see the response from the server. If we search for the word artist, so we have the page artists.php, not interested in this. Also, these are okay, so here we can see counts. Artist equal to one, meaning we have now one artist. Searching, searching for other occurrences of this word. Okay, we have artist equal to two, meaning we have now two artists. And artist equal to three, meaning we have now three artists. Searching for more occurrences. And we right now we are brought back to the very beginning, which means we have only three artists. What is the name of the second artist? Okay, you have to open this back. It's going to search for artists equal to two. And the name is Vlad3. So that covers the answers for this room. Okay, now, having explained the features or the basic features of Wireshark, the navigation of the packets, the filtering, and having answered some questions, which demonstrates the practical side of this uh, explanation. Let's now cover other aspects of Wireshark. So now assume that you have gone over these packets, analyzed a couple, of, a couple of, of them, and then you want to get information on the bigger picture of this capture file, the representation of the protocols, the number of the uh, packets for each protocol, in addition to the endpoints, the queries. So all of this statistical information can give you a larger picture of what the capture or what the packet capture represents in terms of the protocols exchanged, the number of packets for each protocol, and the queries. So we want to do that. You can go to stats and you can explore these options. Let's start with resolved addresses. If you click on the resolved addresses, you can identify the IP addresses and the DNS name or the host name for every IP address or even Ethernet addresses. As you can see, we can use the all entries and we can click on hosts. You can see the IP addresses and the name resolution or the DNS host name for these IP addresses. This helps us tremendously if you want to uh, examine if there is C2 uh, uh, servers found here. You can find them. You can find them from here. And also you can search through Ethernet addresses or MAC addresses. It will give you the manufacturers. Take a look here. We have, as you can see, the manufacturer name for every MAC address. So here gives us the, the DNS resolution for every type of address, whether it is host, IP address, or it is a MAC address. Now let's take a look at the other option which is protocol hierarchy so here it breaks down all available protocols from the packet capture file and helps us to view the protocols as you can see guys in a tree view based on packet counters the percentages so on and so forth 
we can see the overall usage of the ports and services and focus on the event of interest for example in the ethernet protocol we can select um, the ipv6 and we can see the number of packets exchanged in, in this case we have 38 packets under the ipv6 udb protocol we have one packet ipv4 we have 81,000 and they represent 99 percent of the packets under ipv4 packets udb and again we have other protocols such as NetBIOS, SMB, Transport Light Security. So it is a protocol breakdown uh, for each packet and the number, uh, sorry, for protocol breakdown for each protocol and the percentage of packets and the number of packets. We can view them from the protocol hierarchy. Okay, now we go back here and we select conversations so the conversation represents the communication or the traffic between the endpoints whether they are represented by their ethernet address or by ipv4 address or ipv6 address uh, based on the tcp protocol or db protocol we can see the uh, packets exchange between hosts using the uh, conversations menu okay other one here is the endpoints so endpoints is similar to conversations the only difference here is that this option provides unique information for a single entity for example if we're looking at the ethernet entity we can see the pertinent information or the statistical information for this ethernet host ipv4 same here more detailed information about every single entity on the other hand, if we go back to conversations and I click on IPv4, we can see same thing, but with less focus or less details on other aspects, such as the country and the city. We cannot see them here, but we can see aspects such as, you know, uh, the flow of the packets from A to B. So address A and address B. We can see the flow of packets between them, but we cannot see details uh, for every single one of them, right? So it's useful to take a look at the conversations uh, option here if you want to see the traffic exchange between hosts. But if you want to focus on every single one of the hosts or the endpoints, you want to take a look at the endpoints. And here in the endpoints, we have this thing or feature, which is name resolution. So this option here is offered. If you highlight a single IP address, we can select name resolution, but it is not enabled. So we have to enable it by uh, from the Wireshark menu. If this is not enabled, you have to go to edit. Okay. And then preferences, selecting name resolution, and we can see the options. We can resolve MAC addresses. We're going to need to select Resolve Transport Names and Resolve Network IP Addresses. Once we click on OK, everything will change here. So we can see every, every IP address that can be resolved. We can see the uh, resolution of the IP address here. We go back to Endpoints. Now we click on an IP address. Now the name resolution feature is enabled. Click on the name resolution and we can see the name resolutions of every single IP address. It resolves to the DNS name of this IP address. Fine. Let's go back to edit, preferences. Oops. So here, name resolution bring the settings back to where they were okay back to statistics so we've explored resolved addresses protocol hierarchy conversations endpoints now let's go over these ipv4 stats and ipv6 stats so here we can see more details paired protocol so ipv4 we can select all addresses 
and we can see more details about every single address IP address here the count of the bytes we can sort them as well so for example this IP address has exchanged 58,570 packets and we can see the rate and the percentages as well alternatively you can go back here and select to analyze them using the um, destination and destinations and ports or you can focus on source and destination address or IP protocol types click on this and we can see now statistics based on the protocol UDB or TCP back here again to you can select IPv6 all addresses and we can see statistical information for every single IPv6 address now sometimes we want to focus on protocols let's say we want to select um, stats about application live protocols such as DNS we can click here and take a look at the stats related to the DNS protocol for example we can see here total number of packets is 171 when we focus on this we can see more details such as the number of packets for every DNS query type so we can see you have 86 queries and 85 responses and we can see the breakdown of every single query we have a query for a queries PTR queries as well same applies to HTTP in the HTTP here we can select to view the packet counter or the number of requests the load distribution and the request sequences if you take a look at the requests we can see here all the requests made in the packet capture and we can see their count as well so everything there is to see or to find about the, st the statistics for the protocols the IP addresses can be found from the stats menu we have just explored okay now we're gonna need to go back to the filters remember guys that we have two type of filters we have the capture filter and we have the display filter most probably we're gonna need to focus on the display filter that we can use through the display filter bar from here the white one here we can apply all sorts of filter to extract insights and events it's worth mentioning that we have operators that we need to keep in mind before we start using the display filters let's go back now to the board and explain these filters open a new page so we're going to start first with the operators that we need to learn before we start learning how to write the filters we have first the comparison operators so what are the comparison operators that can be used in the queries so a we have the equal the equal can be represented by two equal signs similar to zeek similar to brim sorry that we have talked about in the previous video for example we can search an example really can be ip dot address equal to 10 10 10 1 here we're going to use this query to look for packets containing this ip address so here the that's the equal operator b we have the not equal can be highlighted or used using this expression the same applies here if you apply this here it can look for packets where this IP address is not found C we have greater than this is simple we have less than and this is also simple that's the expression E and F here we can find greater than and less than or equal greater than or equal this is the expression for this okay these are the comparison operators what about other kind of operators such as the logical operators can open a new page here and two 
we have the logical operators. What are the logical operators or expressions? First one, we have the and, and we have or, and we have the not. Okay, and can be represented by double ampersand. Now, for or, two pipes, and for not, one exclamation mark. For example, let's say I want to search for the packets containing two IP addresses. Let's say ip.source equal to 10, 10, 10, 1, and ip.destination equal 10, 10, 10, 2. Here, I want to look for packets where the source IP equals to this and the station IP equals to this. Now, the AND here will match the condition if both of, of both operands here, the one on the left and the one on the right, are matched or satisfies the condition. Meaning, if one, of the, if one of them wasn't found in the packets, meaning if the IP address here is 10.10.10.1 10, 10, 10, was found in one packet at a source address, but the destination address of this packet was different than this one, it's not going to give you, or it's not going to satisfy the condition, hence it's not going to return this packet as a packet that satisfies the condition. Now for the OR, the same. The OR works differently in that only one of these operands needs to satisfy the condition, needs to exist in the packet in order to return the packet as a packet that satisfies the condition. And lastly, we have the NOT. An example of NOT is, for example, IP address, IP.source, uh, NOT equal to this. This will find all the packets where the IP address here is not mentioned. Now, one note about this. The use of this is depreciated. Therefore, we cannot use it anymore in newer versions of Wireshark. So what's the alternative? Instead of using this formula here, we can use question mark, exclamation mark, and here the IP address. Here, it's going to look for all the packets where this IP is non-existent. Okay, now let's take a look at some filters I have here. Let's take a look at this one. For example, this one, we show the packets containing the IP address here. Another one here, this one is depreciated, so we're going to remove this and use the newer expression. Here it will look for the packets where the IP address 192.168.11 doesn't exist. Another one example is here. He used the ampersand, double ampersand, because we want to show packets containing both IP addresses. This one here, we look for subnets. Show all packets containing IP addresses from this subnet. Let's take a look at one that's different. Here we look using the source port using the TCP protocol, TCP protocol dot source port, meaning we want to look for packets where the source port of the TCP protocol equals to one, two, three, four. Here we search using the HTTP response code. There are so many Wireshark filters, depending on the protocol and depending on many other factors. You can't memorize all of them. Uh, that's why it's important to understand only the syntax, the operators, the, the comparison operators, and the logical operators. Here we can, as you can see guys, we are searching the packets containing the, first off, we search HTTP packets, and then we search the ones where the response code equal to 200. Here we search within the request method. Here we search within the response code. Similarly, we can search using the protocol name, SMTP or DNS. This one here, dns.flags.response equal to zero. Here we look to 
show the DNS requests. Similarly, if you want to show the DNS responses, we're going to replace 0 with 1. These are the DCP port filters. If you want to uh, filter packets using this DCP protocol, you can use these filters, port, destination port, source port. Same for or same with UDP. You can also search using, using the DNS records, the query type. One means we are looking for to find DNS queries where the record equals to A. And here we're looking to find text records. It's going to be query type equals to 16. Okay. Now let's talk about advanced filtering. So there are more advanced filters that we need to know in order to use the filters more efficiently and extract more insights from the packets. We have this filter. Filter name is contains. Let's have an example. Let's say I write this filter HTTP dot server and then the word contains come here and here that's the word I am looking for so what does that mean it means I want to search the HTTP packets first okay where the server section from the packet equals to Apache or contains the word Apache it will list me all the HTTP packets where the server name contains the word Apache. Here, it means I'm looking for the packets containing <coughs> response, responses or packets containing the server as Apache. Another advanced filter is the match or matches. Wait. Let's take an example. Everything is best demonstrated with an example. So HTTP dot host. Okay, matches comes here, and then two double quotes. PHP, and then here we have um, say HTML. Okay, what does this filter do first again we list the http packets and then we are instructing wireshark to look at the host section of the http packets if the host section or the host the value of the host match keywords such as php or html it's going to return a response And we have another one. It is named as in. Now I use the in operator here to search inside a specific range or uh, scope. It's very useful if you want to search through a port range. An example is TCP dot port, and here comes in, and here we search through a range eighty four four three eighty eighty. So here we list all the TCP packets first, okay, where the port field have values either 80, 443, or 8080. So here we, as you can see, we use the word in to search using ranges. It is very similar to for loops, for i in uh, 1, 2, 5, 6, used in bash scripts. It's very similar in concept. Now let's answer some questions to demonstrate this in a practical fashion. Investigate the resolved addresses. What is the IP address of the host name? Starts with BBC. 
So go to resolved addresses. And from here, we can use, uh, we can search PVC. And we can see there is one address that resolves to a name or DNS name that contains the word BBC. That's the IP address. What is the number of IP v4 conversations? So here we're looking to find or to extract uh, information based on the protocol. It's going to select the protocol hierarchy. You can see the number of packets. We want to find out the number of packets for IPv4 protocol. You can see there are 81,420. Oops, no. This is IPv4. Ah, okay. I think I mixed them up. It's asking for the conversations, not the packets. So we're going to go to conversations. Highlight IPv4. <laughs> it's very clear that the number is 435 packets. Hence, this is the number. How many bytes were transferred from the micro ST MAC address? So here we're focusing on a specific endpoint. So we're going to go back and select endpoints. Ethernet, enable name resolution, and we're going to search for micro ST. Let's see here. So we have one micro ST. And we're going to see how many bytes were transferred. So we have 10,478 packets. And the number of bytes is here. 7474K. What is the number of IP addresses linked with the Kansas City? We are here in the endpoints. Are we in the endpoints? Yes. IPv4, uh, we want to look for the city information. So we can categorize here or sort them and look for Kansas. The question is, how many IP addresses linked with Kansas? So one, two, three, four. Which IP address is linked with linked AS organization? and the associate IP address can be found here. Okay, next we're gonna answer this, the task three questions. Fine, what is the most used IPv4 destination address? Now we want to dig deeper into the details related to the IPv4, so we're gonna select IPv4 stats and select destinations and ports. What is the most used IPv4 destination? We're gonna sort them by count. There is some lag, but it's still displaying the data. Okay, so when we sort them, we have this IP address with 29,387 packets. This is our IP address. What is the max service request response time of the DNS packets? Again, details pertinent to a specific protocol. We're going to find it by clicking on the protocol itself. Sort. And the max is here, 0 0.4678. What is the number of HTTP requests accomplished by this host? So we're going to go back and look at hey, HTTP. Specifically, we need to look at the load distribution. Load distribution. Here we can see the requests made by the host so rad msn.com 
as you can see here guys we have these hosts b.rad rad and we have also additional ones we have this as well so one with the ip244 and we have with the ip231 and with the ip232 but the thing is we need only to count the ones that start with rad so we're gonna ignore the b.rad gonna count rad.msn.com 15 i'm gonna ignore this one i'm gonna count this one so 24 plus 15 equals to 39 okay now we're gonna go to packet filtering what is the number of ip packets fine let's use the filtering now and use ip to search for the ip packets this will display the number of the ip packets under the displayed the bottom toolbar we have displayed equal to 81420 what is the number of packets with ttl value less than 100 less than 10 so how to conduct this search ttl is part of the ip packet so gonna keep here the same ip keyword dot ttl gonna be less than 10 this will give us the number of packets where ttl is less than 10 they are 66 packets okay what is the number of packets which uses tcp port 4444 so tcp dot tcp dot port equal four 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 and the number of packets is six hundred thirty two what is the number of http get requests sent to port 80 so we're gonna first list the http get requests okay where the method is get and then we're gonna satisfy another condition these requests need to be sent over port 80, not uh, HTTPS, because GET request can also be sent over HTTPS or port 443. So here we can write the first condition, HTTP request method needs to equal to GET. That's the first one. And then the next condition is tcp dot port equal to 80 and now we have 527 packets what is the number of type a dns queries what is the number of type a dns queries okay so we covered this here so type a we have to type this query so now we are retrieving the type a dns queries but here this covers the request and response as you can see bottom here the displayed number of packets is 106 but the answer is way lower than this so why because here we want to search for the queries so we have to specify whether it is re uh, a re a request or response so you're gonna search with let's go back to the filter and grab this query this represents the requests gonna and so we're looking for dns type a queries and in the request so when the query or the record type is a it comes as a response so here this needs to be changed to one to represent dns responses and now the number matches 51 packets now to advance filtering questions okay 
find all Microsoft IIS servers. Okay, let's first find the Microsoft IIS servers. In the HTTP, you're gonna need to search in the HTTP packets dot server. And then the advanced operand is contains the word IIS. That's the first one. Now we found all the packets where the server is IIS. Next, what is the number of packets that did not originate from port 80? Meaning the source port was not 80. So how to write this? TCP dot source port. Okay. Not equal to 80. But we have a problem here because as you can see, the display bar is red, meaning there is a problem. Because we're using a depreciated term, operant, we're going to need to change this. So let's say it becomes like this, equal to 80. And then between two parentheses, we're going to do it like this. Still not resolved. Source port equal to 80 and http.server contains okay so here we have the condition needs to be and and now it worked so this query is we want to look for the packets where the server contains the word IIS meaning we're looking for servers uh, that use the IIS software to serve the web pages and the source port needs to be not equal to 80. Let's see here how many packets we have that satisfy this condition. And we have 21 packets. Find all Microsoft IIS servers. What is the number of packets that have version 7.5? Okay, now let's go. Sometimes we cannot find the exact query we want to use or the exact attribute that we need to use. Here we want to use the attribute, an attribute that corresponds to a version. Let's take a look at a sampled packet here and see if there is um, Yeah, so as you can see in the server attribute here of the packet, it contains version information. So we can use this attribute in the query the folder for the required version. The required version is 7.5. So the query here becomes like this. We're going to move this part or keep the end and here http.server using the server attribute from here. And then the server attribute matches matches 7.5. How many packets? We have 71. Indeed, we have 71. What is the total number of packets that use ports or that use these ports? Here we're going to use the operand in because we're looking to find packets uh, in a range that, sets, that sets, satisfy a range. So here we're going to say tcb.port in and type in our range. Four threes separated by a space, not by a comma. Four fours and four nines. We have 2235 packets. What is the number of packets with even TTL numbers? Okay, now here we can again use the um, word string or the keyword string. So string keyword here will convert whatever it comes between the parentheses, okay, will convert into a string. Here we're looking to convert a TTL value, okay, into a string. So ip.ttl. Okay, that's the first part of the string or the, or the filter. And then we're going to use matches. Now for even numbers, And then, then we have to write 0, 2, 4, 6, 8. This will correspond to even numbers. 
for odd numbers let's see where is the formula for the odd numbers now this is for as you can see this is for even numbers for odd numbers we can use this okay what is the number of packets we answered this change the profile to checksum control what is the number of bad tcb checksum packets in order to change the current profile we're gonna have to go to edit configuration profiles and select the checksum profile now we loaded up the checksum profiles which will show us all the packets that failed the checksums we want to filter for the bad checksums in order to do that we're going to write a specific or custom query that corresponds to tcb.checksum okay dot status equal to zero which will show us all the packets that failed the uh, checksum they are 34,185 and the last question here about advanced filter is use the existing profile use the existing filtering button to filter the traffic okay this is the filter button by the way what is the number of displayed packets so we're going to click on this button and show the displayed packets number and they are 261 okay guys that was it for wireshark now in the next video we're going to take live examples by analyzing different sorts of traffic this video was a complete guide for uh, those who want to get started in the next video we're going to take examples of different sorts of traffic and security scenarios